There is a war on reality, and the battlefield for that war is your consciousness. Almost everything that you see in society or from official sources is fabricated or rigged. It's fictional. Uh, it's all designed to, to, to weave this artificial tapestry of beliefs and ideas and so-called truths in your mind that actually are, are not true and that are not based on reality. And the, the point of this is to create a system of control, a prison for your mind that gives you the illusion of thinking that you have freedom of thought or freedom of choice or that you live in a democracy, for example, when uh, in reality this entire system around you is all fabricated to force you into making certain decisions or taking certain actions or avoiding certain actions, all of which further the desires and the consolidation of power of the totalitarian regime in power. All so-called official stories or official narratives are really mythologies just restated in the language of truth, but rooted in distortions of truth. And yet they are accepted by people as reality because the fuel behind the myth is peer pressure or consensus or social acceptance. So whether we're talking about history or medicine, flu vaccines, for example, or science, uh, GMOs, or the role of government, the role of, of money, economics, central banking, uh, quantitative easing. Uh, all of these are based on cultural myths that are provably false. If you're wondering how all of this happens, it begins with the idea that we are a disconnected society. Uh, almost nothing that you think you know your beliefs, your, your truths, actually comes from first-hand experience. Almost everything that you think is true was actually told to you by someone else. When you watch the news, let's say on CNN, for example, you think that they are telling you something that's true and then that idea of truth transfers into your belief system and now you believe that what they said was true because they reported it, but you never saw it. You weren't there. And so you're depending on third parties to tell you what's real in the world. Well, what happens when those third parties are deliberately lying to you or withholding information or falsifying or distorting information? And that's actually the system in which we live. The media, government, institutions, academia, every sector of society is engaged in an elaborate scheme of lies and distortions. And yet they have the, the ambiance of apparent authority and so they are believable by most people and it is these institutions media academia government that create this fictional construct in your mind which we could call the matrix and you are living in this matrix psychologically and you think it's real you think that all of these things that are being reported on cnn are actually happening in the world the way that they're being depicted on cnn what you don't realize is that it's all theater it's all theater. The TSA is called security theater because the TSA adds virtually nothing to your actual security. Uh, government, most of what federal government does is pure theater. In fact, they make things worse. If they got out of the way and stopped their activities, we wouldn't have ISIS, for example. We wouldn't have uh, international war. We wouldn't have race wars in America because it's actually whipped up by government and by media. It is created by these systems and it is created by implanting these false ideas into your mind and counting on the fact that you accept them without critical thinking. They know how to bypass the hard wiring of your mind. Your brain is hardwired to accept certain things as true based on the source from which they come. You are hardwired to automatically believe those who appear to be authority sources. This is part of the human brain. This is your neurology. This is the way that uh, you were born. It's not just authority sources, but also you're wired to accept consensus reality, which means that if enough people believe something and you find yourself in a position where you are the one person in a group that does not believe what the rest of the people believe in that group, then you are likely to change your belief, even in complete contradiction to your 
direct experience because the consensus is considered a greater authority than what you see and experience with your own eyes and, and first-hand senses. You've got to think for yourself. You're all individuals. Yes, we're all individuals. You're all different. Yes, we are all different. I'm not. In other words, if you're looking at a barn and the barn is, is blue, but everybody else in the group says, no, no, that barn is actually red. And if they are insisting that it's red, but you see blue, then before very long, you will change your belief and you will agree with the group and you will say, yeah, it must be red. I must be, I must be wrong about that uh, because everybody else says it's red and how could all those people be wrong? Uh, this, this is the way the matrix is reinforced in your mind. You see the media, government and academia really only has to convince a certain critical mass of people uh, of all of their myths and false narratives and official lies. And from that point forward, then those people will enforce those m myths and narratives onto the other people who are incapable of what I call uh, self-defense thinking. Uh, standing your ground cognitively and being true to uh, your experience and your common sense and your uh, cognitive capability to reason. Uh, in fact, reason is the enemy of every government system of totalitarian control because reason takes away the tools of control and social manipulation. If a person can reason through uh, economics, or reason through geopolitics or understanding the rule of law or the branches of government, then that is a, a horrific threat to the systems of control and manipulation that dominate society today. And this is why every strong political argument that is stated during elections, for example, is not based on reason. Uh, it is based on an emotional exploitation of the specific neurological vulnerabilities of the population to corral people like cattle into a specific emotional direction uh, where they abandon reason and they follow their anger or their hope or their excitement. If you have a candidate who can give people chills when they speak like Obama did, then it doesn't matter if anything that Obama said actually makes any sense because if he's giving people chills then they have in essence bypassed the critical thinking uh, parts of the brain or the, the psyche and they've gone right into the emotional agreement which is uh, far more powerful in terms of neurological control of individuals in society. So what is reality? Uh, reality then becomes whatever is promoted by the consensus institutions of uh, official narratives, which is the, the mainstream media, government, uh, academia, science journals, and so on. Reality is whatever they say it is, and it doesn't have to make sense, and it doesn't have to be scientifically valid. It doesn't have to even be true. It can be the opposite of truth. And it even becomes consensus reality because then if enough people believe that reality, then, then they begin to reinforce it as well. So there's so many examples of this, like the propaganda on flu shots, for example. Uh, most flu shots are, are absolute quackery. They, they don't work. They're the wrong viral strain. They confer virtually no immunity whatsoever to, to anyone. And yet the consensus reality among uh, scientists and doctors and media and so on is that flu shots are amazing. They're, they're almost like bulletproof vests against viral strains. Uh, that's, that's what people believe, but it, is, it has nothing to do with actual scientific reality or truth. It's simply a narrative that has achieved a sufficient critical mass to become uh, socially true in the minds, in, in the shared uh, psyche network, if you will, of a, um, a manipulated society. Uh, but it doesn't, it doesn't have anything to do with actual reality. And then ideas like this are reinforced by ridiculing anyone who dares to question that reality. So if someone says, well, hey, flu shots don't seem to work, or you know, they, 
this year's flu shot is really last year's flu strain. How can it work unless you're a time traveler? Or, uh, hey, there's still mercury in flu shots. Why are we injecting children with mercury, which is a known uh, brain damaging toxic heavy metal? Anyone who brings up these questions is immediately uh, shamed, is immediately ridiculed, uh, dismissed as a, a crackpot. Uh, because, not, not because they're wrong, they aren't wrong, they're actually correct, but because their ideas and their questions threaten to shatter the consensus Berlin Wall of, of cognitive uh, certainty, if you will. All of these status quo institutions of, of science or medicine, politics, finance, economics, and so on, they all depend on the proliferation of specific myths and false narratives for their own continued existence and survival. And if you look at every scientific revolution or medical revolution in history, it involved a changing of the narrative from one narrative that was at least partially false to a new narrative that is a higher truth or a greater truth or an expanded truth of some kind. For example, in science, if you look at the history of Newtonian physics, Isaac Newton wasn't wrong about Newtonian physics and the laws of motion, conservation of momentum and so on, but it wasn't the, the greater picture of physics that came along with Einstein's theory of special relativity or, or even quantum physics after that as well. So you have, in essence, you have, you have uh, outbound spirals of knowledge where you have uh, expanding realms of knowledge that make the the inner, more limited realms of knowledge obsolete. And every, every scientific revolution in history or medical revolution has required the, uh, the, in essence, the abandonment of the previous status quo. And that is what every existing status quo fears the most, is being made irrelevant or being made outdated or uh, discovering that they are no longer relevant to a society that has moved forward in its understanding of science or medicine. A politically correct language is a destroyer of reality and it's one of the most uh, devastating tools of social control and thought control. If you think about it, uh, PC language is all about controlling what you think and limiting what you think by limiting what you say and the, limiting the words that you're allowed to use. Uh, PC language is really sort of the, the demand that your thoughts and words conform to a, a structured false narrative that is acceptable by the current uh, sheeple of society. It is a consensus reality to which you must adhere verbally and cognitively. Otherwise, you're going to be attacked or shamed or ridiculed or or trolled all over the internet. So if you, if you dare question uh, any official narrative of PC culture, then you are uh, maliciously attacked, even if what you say is absolutely true. For example, you see this reflected on college campuses across America with these uh, safe spaces. Well, what is a safe space? A safe space is this imaginary place that uh, college students have created for themselves where no ideas that they don't already agree with are allowed to be stated. So when someone like Breitbart editor Milo Yiannopoulos, when he wanted to go to campus and, and speak and talk about, uh, in his views, why feminism was uh, a philosophical contradiction, for example, he would be very aggressively attacked, maliciously trolled, uh, banned, censored, physically attacked in some cases. Uh, because he, he was invading the so-called safe space. And so colleges in this way are, are really waging this war on reality by preparing their students to only live inside artificial psychological constructs while avoiding preparing those students to live in the real world. Because in, in the real world, people disagree with you. Uh, in the real world, not everybody is going to conform to your ideas and your way of thinking. Uh, in fact, in a, in a truly free society, in a truly tolerant society, there is tolerance for a huge diversity of ideas, especially 
those ideas that uh, you may not agree with. If you don't have tolerance for the ideas that you don't agree with, then you really don't have tolerance at all. But the psychologically fragile progressives of today, the PC uh, generation, snowflake, cry bullies of college campuses, if you will, they think that tolerance means only agreeing with them. So they, they misunderstand what tolerance is. They don't understand what freedom is, what freedom of thought is. And, and they don't understand what reality is. And this is all by design. This is to keep people isolated from reality, to make sure that no one can live in reality. Because remember, if you, if you teach people how to live in reality, they might become self-sufficient. And that's a huge threat to the system. So it's, it's much better if you're a globalist government it's much better to train people to live in these artificial constructs where you control the narrative, you feed them their information, you control the news media, you create the cultural myths, you create the language and you enforce the language, you restrict thoughts, you restrict words, and you, in effect, control the minds of all the people, you control their decisions, you control their votes, you control their entire belief system. And you do it without ever having to fire a gun or take anyone prisoner, or uh, shoot artillery, or use tanks. You can occupy an entire nation by simply waging war on the minds of the people who live there. And that is exactly what has been done in America, and that's why America is now an occupied nation, occupied by a deliberate system of mental distortions and uh, psychological manipulations that was designed to make sure no one lives in the real world and becomes self-sufficient and becomes an independent thinker. The role of the media in all of this is to, of course, reinforce these narratives and delusions. And the media, everything's staged in the media. Virtually everything you see on CNN is uh, either a half-truth or a complete lie or is a distraction from the actual important news that you should be paying at attention to. Mainstream media stages fake scenes. They set up uh, studios and then act like they are on-site um, reporting from a war zone, for example. They'll put two people in the same parking lot and act like one of them is a remote reporter somewhere else. They'll just stage it. It's so laughably obvious that they're manipulating this. They will use different camera angles to, uh, to try to create the appearance of large crowds when it's just a small group of people, or they'll, they'll move the camera away from something that they don't want you to see. They manipulate everything. Uh, it's all theater. It's all designed to create this, this elaborate narrative because what the media has discovered is that they can fool most people uh, very easily, at least for some period of time. You know something? They don't want people who are smart enough to sit around the kitchen table to figure out how badly they're getting fucked by a system that threw them overboard 30 fucking years ago. They don't want that. You know what they want? They want obedient workers. Obedient workers. People who are just smart enough to run... The public school system does not train people to think for themselves. And this is all by design. Uh, public schools are really government-run schools. And they are, in essence, indoctrination centers. And they're designed to create, as George Carlin said, obedient workers. Not to create independent thinkers, inventors, innovators, uh, rugged individuals, no, that's not the goal. They are there to create obedient workers who are conformists, who will go along with the system and not rock the boat and not question the status quo, not do anything other than what they are told by the government. And even if you get into medical school, you wanna be a doctor, you go through about eight years of training and residency, and during that time, if you ever question the status quo, then you're expelled from the system. Uh, you're, you're not supposed to think for yourself. You're, you are supposed to absorb and then regurgitate the information that is essentially sponsored by the drug companies that now dominate the medical schools. And that's why doctors can spend eight years learning nothing but propaganda. And they come out of medical school thinking that they're doctors when, uh, in effect, they're, they're simply uh, biological 
pharmaceutical vending machines that are easily controlled by the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, there are so many vectors of social control. We're taught false histories because, as George Orwell wrote, that if you can control history, then you can control the present. And if you control the present, then you control the future. And so one of the easiest ways for the system to manipulate individuals and control uh, the direction of, of any uh, culture or nation is to rewrite the history and uh, reject the actual factual history and replace it with a, a propaganda version of history that supports the false narratives and the cultural mythologies that you're trying to augment as forms of social control or social engineering. Uh, this is a key element of how people are manipulated in America today and it's why it's so important to study actual history and to read about the Founding Fathers and the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, why these came about, where they came from and why it was so critical for a, a new young nation to uh, limit the power of government and to enshrine specific rights of individuals in the Bill of Rights. Uh, until you really understand that, then you have no business uh, voting in society, and that's exactly the way the system likes it. They don't want you to understand history, because anyone who does is really a threat to the future plans of the regime in power. They don't want you to have any connection to your past or even any connection to yourself. They want you to be endlessly uh, and emotionally invested in the cultural icons of the day, the celebrities, sports, uh, Kim Kardashian, whatever the current distraction is, that's where you're supposed to focus your time and energy and psyche while they are loading your brain up with all, with all of these false ideas that manipulate you and disconnect you from reality. So this is how the war on reality is waged, and it's a war that's being waged right now in your mind without your knowledge or consent. If you'd like to help support this video and other videos like this, visit healthrangerstore.com where everything we sell is laboratory tested for heavy metals and more. You'll find superfoods, storable survival foods, nutritional supplements, and a full line of synthetic chemical-free body soaps, shampoos, and oral care products. Everything we sell is non-GMO, and it's all completely free of chemical sweeteners, artificial colors, hydrogenated oils, and other toxic ingredients that you want to avoid. Find all this and much more at healthrangerstore.com.